The false brethren were making their case to the Galatians through the obedience of the law. Paul was making his case to the Galatians. How? In Christ. Verse 13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. As we learned in verse 10, the curse of the law is what? Disobedience to God's law. In Romans 8, 3 and 4, we learned last week that God sent His Son in the likeness of sinful flesh in order to meet the righteous requirements of whose law? His law. Do we understand the magnitude of that statement? It's not necessary to sin anymore. That's what it means. Remember John 16, 33? John 16, 33, I'm going to read it to you. It's the last verse in chapter 16 of John. I'm going to take the liberty of going past a lot of time because I have to finish this. But I have to. Maybe a little bit more than five minutes. This is Jesus speaking in John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take courage. I have what? Overcome. I have overcome the world. Now, some people say, well, that's kind of vague. What does that mean? I have overcome the world. Well, John, that wrote that, because of what Jesus said, recording Jesus' statement, tells us in 1 John 2, Verse 16, specifically, what Jesus is talking about. 1 John 2, 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life, is not from the Father, but is from the world. And this is what Jesus overcame. <laughs> The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Christ gained complete victory over this present evil world. That's what it means. What more do you and I need? Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2.2, 2, I have decided that the only thing I know I'm going to talk about is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The only thing that you and I need is salvation. If we get that, we've got everything. But salvation is only found in the cross of Christ. The cross is a symbol of the curse, but it's also a symbol of the deliverance Amen. from the curse. Do you like that? Amen. In other words, Jesus is the conqueror and deliverer. Christ's death on the cross means life to you and to me. If we are willing to bear about in our bodies the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. The life also that Jesus manifested in His body. And that's a paraphrase from 2 Corinthians 4.10. So, what is the last blessing of Abraham? In Genesis 12.3. In thee shall all the nations of the world be blessed. So those that accept this incredible deliverance from the curse of the law are what? Sealed. By whom? The Holy Spirit. And then we begin to realize here on planet earth a little taste of the power and the blessing of the world Jesus cannot take anyone to heaven until they first choose to be crucified in Him. And then they begin to realize in their personal life the power of the Holy Spirit working through them. And unless you and I experience that here, we disqualify ourselves from being taken to heaven. You would be miserable in heaven if you have not first learned to subordinate your will to God and experience the power of salvation in Christ, here on earth. 
The author of the book Desire of Ages tells us on page 331, the last paragraph, the first three sentences, as through Jesus we enter into rest, heaven begins here. Second sentence, we respond to his invitation, come learn of me, and in thus coming, we begin the life eternal. Where? Here. Third sentence, heaven is a ceaseless approaching to God through Christ. God bless you. Let's have prayer. Loving Father, we thank you for the privilege of studying your word and the presence of the Holy Spirit to not only give us an intellectual awareness of these truths, but a heart appreciation. It is my prayer that each of us will recognize the significance of these concepts and that everything that could be done and needed to be done, has been done in Christ. As He exercised faith in you, may we be convicted in our hearts that, that is the only way that we can qualify for heaven and be happy in heaven. But more importantly, vindicate your character. We thank you for answering these requests because we ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.